<laughs> Welcome everybody to episode 25 of our podcast, quarter of a century. <laughs> I can't believe it. It just seems like it flew like this. Time, it does. Time flies when you're having fun. Anyway, so we've been just talking about people that encounters with Jesus. So we've obviously had 25 or 24 characters. Yeah. Because this is a very special one. We actually... Last week, we went in depth with the, the young rich ruler, and we said there's just a couple of things we want to tie up Absolutely. and um, chat a, about a bit further regarding his encounter with Jesus. So mm. just to recap, do you want to? Yeah, listen, I think um, absolutely we want to. And maybe I just need to um, lean into this. You know, this journey um, of discovering Jesus and people has probably ministered to me personally more than anything else I've ever read. Mm. Uh, regarding Bible study, which is which is unique because it hasn't necessarily been um, uh, a confrontation or a conversation with the Lord and me, but rather me having a reflection of Him on other people. And um, yeah, so I just I'm really blessed, and I'm hoping those that have been watching are blessed, and you can lean into the stories. And we still got a couple of stories to go. You know, there's we will definitely go past the 50 mark. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, no, I'm excited about that. And uh, so this young rich ruler. Yeah, the young rich ruler. That's what no, we, we. So just I think everyone needs to remember the bottom line is yes, firstly a young rich ruler a young person that is actually quite affluent. He's got um he's got finances. He's He's got authority, mm. and um, and I'm of the opinion that uh, it 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 represents a lot of this modern day and age. There's a lot of younger people these days that have got finances and authority. You know, remember in the old years, if you went into um, certain jobs, things they used to refer to you as an appy. Yeah. An apprentice for those people that are watching from overseas. You know, in South Africa, they just cut it down. They called him an appy. But you, you, you would have to do the job and not get the pay. These years, people study and they actually, with their qualification, expect to walk into a position of real income. And then sometimes even into a position of real authority. So this, this, this young man does that. Um, but in the midst of having all of that, he, he still realizes... I now have what everyone thinks they wish they had. But I realize there's something I'm missing. Mm. And uh, what is that? He says, Jesus, how can I have eternal life? And that's when Jesus, interestingly for me, um, engages in the conversation and then engages in a challenge. And I think that's a leadership conversation for you and I on another day as well. It's about engaging with people who you think have got everything they want, but actually adding to them more value, which is eternal eternal life. Jesus then says a whole bunch of things to him, obviously encouraging him to sell up, if you'd like, and make sure that he's giving is towards the, the kingdom. And the Bible says a very strange thing, and maybe this is where you can come, come in. The Bible says he turned away and he left saddened. Yes. And, and, and that deeply concerns yeah. me, that there are some people who know the will of God, whatever it might be for them, I was reading Romans 14 this morning in my own Bible study time uh, regarding don't judge people on what you're eating and what they're eating. Just just leave it alone. Just be who you got to be. But, but it deeply concerns me that some people might know the will of God but still choose to walk away from that, saddened, because they understand the will of God but they don't have the courage to walk towards it. Yeah, but I think it's also a tough one. You know, I, we always, I think we were brought up, the plans that I have for you is to prosper. It's good plans. And here all of a sudden, God mm. says, the plan I have for you is to sell everything you have. Brilliant If you want to have it. And Brilliant you, need to, you need to follow me and, and carry, your, carry your cross. Mm. And I think we struggle a lot of times to lay down everything we have to follow the will or the call of God even on our lives. Um, you know, we know a couple of guys that, that's in ministry that I know, and you might be one of them, that it could have been in a corporate environment and would have had a, maybe a successful career in there, but chose the calling of God above everything else. And I think that's where, what it boils down to as well. Yeah, I, I, think, I think there's truth to that. Um, um, you know, I, I don't want to teach what the scripture doesn't say, but I'm wondering, um, walking away sad, and I wonder what happened after that. Yeah. You know, did Jesus go after him again? Did he possibly come to his senses 
a little later and come back to Jesus? Did he live with regret? Because that's the things I experience more and more and more. Like I said last week, I, I, I've had the privilege of sitting down with people that are wealthy. And what you find out, and, and, I, and I want to repeat myself, the moment you meet people that are wealthy, they're the first people that identify that money is not everything. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, they want purpose. And the people that have seemingly got purpose, the one thing they want is money. <laughs> and so it, it's, it's, it's a balancing act, and you've got to find it with God. Yeah. Uh, I just wonder what that person lived with. And maybe that's the thing I'd want to lean into our listeners right now is um, he left saddened. You know, it's, it's, you go and try and read the scripture about anyone that you can find in the Bible that left saddened. To After my knowledge, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. To my knowledge, he's the only person yeah. that left saddened. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, and 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 that just that just breaks my mm. heart that there are people that could leave saddened by knowing the truth. And the question then we have to ask ourselves is: Are we preaching the truth? Yeah. You know, or are we just trying to entertain some people? Yeah, no, I agree with you. And we, we spoke briefly about the, the previous scriptures where this was this question was asked to Jesus a couple of times in the previous scriptures. Well, mm. what do we need to do to have eternal life? Who's the most important in the yep. kingdom? His disciples asking him. And after the and we have to remember Jesus looked at the, uh, love and compassion to this man before he answered um, and told him to sell everything. So I think we, we spoke about it. Jesus had a desire maybe for this guy to, to follow him. Yeah. Um, but then, then we get to this very famous saying in the Bible that it's, it's um, easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than mm. for a rich man to, to inherit, inherit, inherit eternal life or yeah. to, go, to get into heaven. And this is one of the things that, um, that has been just... You know, just processing and, and th thinking through it. I think one of the things was what they spoke about as well was, and especially with the disciples looking at them, is that a righteous living, we or we as well as Christians, a righteous living, we assume, um, comes with, with wealth. If we look at Job, for instance, you know, he was a, God said he was a righteous man. And then we, we look at it as a blessing. You know, mm -hmm. if you live according to a certain way, you'll reserve, re, uh, re, uh, receive this certain blessing. And here's a man that has actually lived a righteous life. He's got everything, but still it's not enough. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a bit of a wake-up call for the disciples as well to realize that even living that standard of life, um, it, the blessing, the financial blessing or the earthly things we have is not a blessing because of a righteous yeah. living. So, so, so in the old days, there used to be um, a city that was round and they would have had a small um, gate mm -hmm. uh, where the camels would have to come through, uh, which would have been referred to as the R of, uh, of the city that they needed to come through. And what would happen over the, those years is as the camel got there, obviously all the travelers would travel with all these bags on the camel. So when they got to this R of the city, they couldn't get in with all those bags on. The camel just couldn't make it through. So they actually had to get off and take those things off and surrender them outside, and then the camel will be able to go through. And I, th I think that's also a picture of what God is challenging us to do, is to say, hey, listen, if you're going to enter my kingdom, you need to be able to make sure that you're willing to get off Mm. Uh, and remove all the stuff that you've brought along for this long journey, if you'd like, so that you can enter into the kingdom. They obviously would have picked their stuff up and took it with them in and all the rest of it. But I think that's a picture mm. um, of a little bit of following Christ or entering into the right standing with God. Just back to your argument, I think, I think you, you, you're touching something massive there because I think the theology of the church has failed us. On many occasions, we think right standing is blessing. Uh, that can't be true. Because what about people that are righteous in countries where the economy is just absolutely devastating? Yeah. Then you understand blessing has got nothing to do with wealth. Mm. Blessing has got to do with the presence of God, the peace of God in your situation. And it can't be to do with wealth because then there are people that are absolutely wealthy but that are not living a in a right standing with yeah. God so uh, yeah I think at times we've got the whole theology of God's blessing wrong blessing is not finances blessings is the peace and the presence of God in your life in spite of 
the challenges that you yeah. might be facing. I mean, you were right standing and you, you and Louise had to trust God again and again and again for the favor of a child. And now the child's coming and we're, we're totally excited yeah. about that. Um, and I think that's the word. It's a favor. It's favor from God that, that's on, on someone's life. Mm. Uh, just one last thought for me regarding this young man. Uh, uh, I really want to encourage everyone out there. Um, don't, don't walk away saddened. You know, if you read back, you'll see Jesus was not forcing the issue. He was just putting down the challenge. I suspect if that young man had another question to address Jesus with, mm. um, Jesus would have sat and listened and maybe re-answered it. And all I want to do is, uh, if there are people out there, and you find yourself in a position of authority, you find yourself in wealth even, and you find yourself at a place where you're, you're contemplating your conversation with God. Because I've got friends like that, Rainer. I've got friends that are genuinely influential people. But they're, they've, got this, they've got this tussle in their mind regarding um, surrendering to God. All I want to let you know is that heaven is patient with you. Don't buy into the lie that God is going to reject you because you're taking a time to come around. Yeah, I think that's a great way to end off. And just from my side, I think we've seen every person that, that came to Jesus had a question. So if you've got a question, that's ask okay. it to God. I love it's that. okay. Don't, I the, love and that. And the great thing is, the, we, in our minds, we might think this is not the time. You know, Jesus is busy teaching or he's got people around them. I love that. And there's people shouting out questions. So if you've got a question, if you've got a desire, you know, tell it to God. Tell speak it, to speak him. or speak to someone if you would like to. But um, yeah, from our side, if you did enjoy this podcast, please share it with your friends. Subscribe Absolutely. to our channel. You can listen to it on Spotify once again. Also on Sunday evenings on Facebook. If you want to leave a comment or any questions that you've got, it'd be great hearing from you. And then from our side, nothing but love. Nothing but love, friends. Let it be.